I'm Pankas Boston, also known as Katsi, and I'm the police. I'm a social worker working in SADA, which also stands for the Society of the Rehabilitation for Drug Abusers. Um, I was born here in Hong Kong, uh, so, and I'm Nepalese, so I call myself Hong Kong Nepalese. The reason you know, why I'm working for SADA is because uh, I was also uh, addicted to drugs uh, before, and while I was uh, studying here at school, I had already started uh, taking cough syrup and cannabis, and then in total I took drugs for 18 years. My father was in the British Army and then uh, we joined the British Army in 1965. So that's how we came here in Hong Kong. And since, uh, since then we've been living here in Hong Kong. Um, when I was growing up here, you know, like uh, we, didn't, we didn't learn any Cantonese. Uh, we didn't know uh, the outside culture. So while well, staying here in the camp, so we were kind of like isolated from the outer community. At that time, when I was taking the road, you know, it was kind of like just for recreation. And then we, because we were living in the camps, we were living in the camp, and then we were just allowed to go outside once a, once a, once a week. Yeah. So and then of course we wanted to have fun, enjoy, right? So and then that was a. Also, I would say it's, it's also a peer pressure, and then uh, that was the that was the reason at first that first uh, how I started taking how I was introduced about the cannabis and pop syrup, right? So and then uh, I went to Nepal in 1996. So and then at that time I really didn't want to really didn't, because I was back with my family, right? So and then I didn't want to take drugs. And then even I met a lot of people there in Nepal uh, which uh, had a really bad influence on me. But I tried to I tried to stay away from it. But when I when I came back to Hong Kong again, I did find a lot of uh, challenges. Uh, especially, you know, I'm speaking Cantonese, uh, there are a lot of barriers, of course, and then because of the lot of I don't understand the people, right? So I faced a lot of challenges, and yeah. Um, the thing was that, you know, like, actually, I really wanted to pursue my education further, right? So like, uh, uh, I got many times rejected by the colleges here in Hong Kong, and then also uh, the jobs here in Hong Kong was not, I didn't have that opportunity here in Hong Kong. I felt that I didn't have much to do because the only places that I, would, uh, I was advised and suggested to work was construction, uh, restaurants. So, and then I felt I faced a lot of challenges because I couldn't speak language, right? I couldn't speak language, I could not go to school. So, and then this was also one of the, and then I was working, of course, you know, you have to be here in Hong Kong. You know, and then, uh, so I started working in construction. At that time, I met a lot of people, and then other things happening to me. And so then I started taking again, going back to Fox Europe, and I then started again, and then gradually evolved into taking hardcore drugs like heroin, cocaine, cannabis. I, I took drugs total for 18 years. During this period, I lost a lot of things. I couldn't. I was always fired from the job, right? Uh, my family relation was ruined. Uh, it came to the time that I was literally living on the streets. Yeah, I had, you know, like I had tried everything and I had done everything. So it was time for me to, you know, get back to to my feet again. Yes. Of course, through the social workers who were working in Salda. So they were the ones who were there to listen to me who helped me at that time. So they made a very huge impact on me. So that's how I, you know, I overcome. And then I managed to quit in 2011. So right now, after I quit, and then, you know, I really wanted to help my friends, uh, help our uh, non-Chinese community in order to give them resources uh, about the quitting drugs. So that's also uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to work for Salt. What I experienced in my past, you know, like I wasted my 18 years, you know, and what I see right now, you know, go on and see our young generation use uh, my Chinese or Chinese, right, local, right. So when I see them, you know, like going to the same path, so I feel very bad, you know, I don't want them to waste their uh, good golden years in drugs, 
and Western, uh, Western life, right? So, what I would like to do as a social worker here in South, I would always love to go to, like, uh, go to the youth and then try to try to talk with them, help them out, to listen to them, and then just to be a friend with them. You know, like, I really, I really like doing this, going to the youth and inspiring them. I think uh, we do have a very strong ethnic minority community here in Hong Kong, but uh, it seems that somehow, you know, like we still also are facing a lot of challenges in uh, living in Hong Kong. They are always facing the uh, language problem, uh, resources, you know, not knowing of a lot of resources there in Hong Kong, right? So if we can manage to work with the ethnic minority, community leaders and then try to uh, try to escalate the message or resources to other ethnic minority here inside the community uh, probably uh, we might be able to you know, help them out. Can you write Hong Kong in Chinese? I wrote Hong Kong because <laughs> I can speak, I can speak, I can understand a little bit, but I don't know how to write. As you can see, this is the fashion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, where do you see this the most and do you know what is it used for? Uh, we see the fashion at home and it's a blessing. Can you name three Chinese dip songs? Siwai, Hakao. And it's yummy. <laughs> Do you regard Hong Kong as your home for the foreseeable future? Yes, um, I'm hopeful. Yeah, I, would, uh, I, I, I do consider Hong Kong as my home, and then, uh, I hope we, you know, I, I hope we stay there. Is there somebody you want to thank the most, or was there any biggest supporter throughout your journey? Um, yes, of course, you know, like, uh, until today, you know, like, I'm trying every day, I try my best to um, help my, help in the community, right, and so whatever is happening, and of course, I would like to, uh, I'm very grateful to my family, and the second is, of course, uh, my saga, uh, saga family, which I consider them as my second family, um, so, Really grateful to both of them. In your opinion, how do you think we can make Hong Kong a better place for everybody? I believe Hong Kong is already better, but the most important thing is that we need to understand how can we make ourselves better. Uh, right now, we are, as a minority, we are facing a lot of challenges to adapt to the local community and then also for the locals they are having a very difficult time to work with non-Chinese so seeing all this I think uh, cultural competence is very important and if we are able to do this then definitely we can live uh, in harmony together.